Hey everyone, and welcome back to my WordPress theme development series. In this video, we are going to talk about custom post types. We're also going to learn how to implement them. Now, what is a custom post type? Well, let's put it in a real world situation. You're creating a WordPress website for yourself or a customer, and they are a car dealership, and they want to put up their cars on their website so people can buy them. It's not an online shop. It's more like a catalog of their cars, maybe a bit of information about each car, a picture, a gallery, a contact form for that car, all that sort of stuff. Technically, you could achieve that by using pages or even the posts, but it would just be messy. And if you're going to hand over this website to your customer, or even yourself just managing the website, it's better to use a custom post type. Now a custom post type is pretty much like pages or posts, but on the left hand side, you will see your own post type here. So you might see something like cars here on the left hand side, and then you can add a car, very much like you would add a page or a post, and you can just manage it through that menu. So let's go and create our first custom post type for cars. We're going to assume we're a car dealership here. Go into functions.php in your project and let's type out a function. Function will be called my underscore first underscore post underscore type. You can call it whatever you'd like, but if you want to just follow with me, it would be good. Then we can do add action underneath that function and we'll make it so that the action that the function runs when WordPress runs the init hook which is pretty much when WordPress fires this hook. And this hook pretty much loads just before the actual website loads. So uh, just before the headers are loaded on the website. And then we obviously want the action, the init hook to run our function. And that's it. Okay, so we've created the actual hook. So now within our function, we firstly want to use a function that WordPress has created or provided us with, which is called register underscore post underscore type and inside there we want to call it what our post type is going to be called so we're going to call it cars for example and we're going to we are going to then inject our options into there so we're going to create a variable we're going to just call it args and then on top of our, our function we're going to create the variable args and we're going to make it an array now within this array, we're going to put all the options we want for this specific post type, okay? So there are heaps of options and you can Google them. If you do a search for this specific function in WordPress, you'll see all the options and it will give you more in-depth information as to how each option works. But I'm gonna put the important ones here, okay? The first one we're going to do is public, which means that it's gonna be public, publicly accessible by the user on the front end and the back end and we're gonna make that true. Then we're gonna do has archive, and that will mean that it will just pretty much have an archive like a blog post does. It has an archive, you click into it, and then it takes you to the single post. Uh, then we're going to have uh, make it uh, uh, support specific things. So let's just say we want it to support the, the uh, title. So we want people to be able to edit the title. Uh, we want them to be able to have access to the editor and we also want them to have access to the post thumbnail. So thumbnail. Um, so that this allows you to restrict certain parts of the uh, page that they can edit. Um, and you can remove that if you want to and it will just be like a basic post or a basic page. Uh, and then what we can do is we can also choose if we want to change the way that the slug comes up. So the slug is, say for example, you go to test.test forward slash cars. Instead of it being cars, you could do, you know, my cars or something like that. You can change that if you want to. So you can always do this, rewrite. And inside there, it accepts an array again. And we'll do slug. And you can make it my hyphen cars. So you need to make sure that you put a hyphen. It won't work if you put just a, a a space or something like that so it definitely needs to be a hyphen but we're just going to make it cars as well in fact you don't need to use this at all because it's automatically going to use this okay and uh now that we've created a we've registered a post type called cars and we've injected this argument into there 
if we save it and we go to our dashboard, we should now see on the left hand side cars, but we don't. All we see is posts twice. So what we want to do is we want to go and we want to add a label. Okay, so we'll do labels and we'll put an array in there. And inside the array, we can do the name. So that's usually the plural. So we'll make it cars. And then we'll do the singular name. And that will be car. And you'll see why this is later because it uses this singular name when you click on the button to add a car, for example. So let's go and refresh now. And you should see now cars on the left hand side. And it behaves very similar to how posts do. So you can see posts. If you click into posts, it kind of looks the same. So that brings me to another thing called hierarchical. It's, a, it's an option called hierarchical. H-I-E-R-A-R-C-H-I-C-A-L. -E -E now you can either make it true or false. Now if I remove these labels and I make hierarchical true, if we go and refresh, you'll see that it acts more like a page as, a, as opposed to a post. If you make it false, it acts more like a post. So I guess uh, pages, uh, you know the difference between pages and posts. Pages are more for static pages that aren't really archived and posts are used for things that are kind of archived and that you know will just keep on growing and growing. But in this instance, it might not really matter because you, you already have an archive, even if it is hierarchical or not. So I'm going to make it hierarchical because I prefer pages, but you can do it otherwise if you like. We'll put the labels back there and we'll refresh that. Cool. We have cars. Now, one little thing you might want to do is change the icon. So to change, change the icon, you just need to do menu underscore icon. And then we need to just put a class of an icon that we want to use. So let's just go to uh, Google and do a search for WordPress dash icons. You'll see dash icons come up here and you can select whichever one you want. Now, I don't think they're pretty limited. So I don't think we're going to be able to find a car if we do a search. Yeah, it's not going to come up, but I guess we could just use anything we want. Let's just say choose a, an image logo when you choose the image or the menu uh, icon you can just choose the class here copy that go into functions and paste it into there and save it now it should when we refresh our dashboard show that image instead cool so we've got our cars custom post type and now let's just say we want to categorize them into like many different types of cars like different brands like ford uh you know Toyota, Nissan, whatever. So what you can do is you can create a taxonomy and the taxonomy is very similar to like a category um, and you can assign it to the post type. Okay, so let's go into our functions.php and let's create my underscore first underscore taxonomy. And after the function, let's add the hook or the action, sorry, to the init hook and we'll assign it to this function name again. Now within the function, we want to create the labels. So let's just copy the labels over from here, paste it into there. Actually, no, we need to, my bad. We need to actually do the ARGS again, and we'll do the array. And within there, we do labels and it will be another array. So I'm just gonna make this readable. There we go. So we'll call that brands and the singular name will be brand, obviously. Okay, so we have the labels. We'll also make it public and we'll do that true and we'll make it hierarchical. Now, in with taxonomies, it is a bit slightly different. Uh, if, if you do a taxonomy that is hierarchical, it will act more like a category. If you don't, if you make it false, it'll act more like a tag. So let's remove the labels again and we'll do hierarchical as false, all right? And uh, let's just finish this off first. We'll do, wait, I'll put the labels back there. We'll just finish this off. We'll do register taxonomy and we'll call the taxonomy whatever we want, but we'll just call it brands. 
And then we need to say what we want the taxonomy to attach itself to. So which post types? We only want it to attach to the cars post type we've created. So we use this ID and as the argument, the next argument for register taxonomy will be an array. And within there, we can do cars. You can obviously do other post types as well if you wanted to, you know, other post type, whatever. But we're just gonna do cars within there. Okay, and then we'll do ARGS. So we're gonna inject the arguments that we created above here, okay? Now I'm gonna remove the labels and I'm gonna save it. And if we refresh, you should see now cars has tags, okay? So I'm sure you're familiar with how tags work. You can assign multiple tags to multiple uh, posts, but it doesn't really give them a hierarchy. It doesn't categorize them. It just kind of gives them a tag, obviously. However, if we make it hierarchical, it will be more like a category. Okay. And then we just put the labels back. So then it makes them called brands. Okay. So now we have created our cars post type and we've created a brand category. So let's go into our cars and we'll create our first one. We'll just call it a Toyota Corolla. Okay. Then we'll add a brand and we'll call that Toyota. And then we'll publish it. So if we click on the link to go into that particular post, it's blank. And that's because we need to go into our tools. Oh no, so settings, permalinks, and just hit save changes here. And that's gonna refresh our permalink structure. So let's go back to it now. And you'll see that it comes up. Now this is using our single.php default template. We want it to use its own template because we wanna design that page different to other pages. So we can go and create a new file and we'll just call it single dash. And we want to then use the name of the post type. So the, so the name of the post type, if we go back, is called cars. So you need to use this ID here, okay? So we'll do single dash cars.php. And based off the WordPress hierarchy, it's going to know that this is the template for the cars post type. Let's go refresh. And as you can see, it's come up blank. So if I type in test and then refresh it again, Beautiful, it's working. Again, if it does not work, you wanna make sure that you're using the right ID for the post type. And also you want to go to settings and then permalinks and then save changes again if, that, if it doesn't work, okay? But as you can see, it is working. So we have the Toyota Corolla. When we go into it, it's using the te uh, our own new template we've created. Let's just copy the single.php and we'll paste it into single-cars.php and we will refresh it. And now you should see that it's coming up. Now I fixed this earlier. If we go to our blog content section here, you may very well get an error with tags. So originally before I fixed it, and I should have fixed it on the video here, when we refresh it, you should see warning invalid argument. It's like an error that comes up. It's because we're asking for it to show the tags when no tags exist. So we can just do if tags and then end if, and it will only check if there are tags. Okay, so that's done. We've created our first custom post type and we've made it work. So let's add some information into here. So let's go to the Lorem Ipsum site and let's generate some content and let's copy and paste it. Okay, so we're going to go and paste it into our Toyota Corolla page. Okay, and as you can see, featured images there. If we went back to functions.php and let's just say we remove thumbnail from there and refresh it, thumbnail is no longer there. So you can kind of control what you what people can see. You could remove the editor. So you can actually just remove this whole thing here and people then can't do anything with it. But that gives you the full control. If you remove it completely, it will de default to normal, how a normal page looks, okay? So now that we've done that, we've got the text in there. If we go and refresh, it will come up like normal. 
Um, and then let's go and find a photo of the Toyota Corolla just to make it look realistic. All right, if I can maybe get this photo. Yeah, save. Oh, it's gonna make it very difficult for me to save. These websites always do this to me. All right, here we go, save that. Um, and we will then go back in here and add it as a featured image. I've got a picture of the Mona Lisa in there because I was trying to do it with art and then I stuffed the video up, so I'm starting it again. <laughs> So there we go, we'll set that as the featured image and we'll update it, refresh, there's the car there. Um, so let's just make it look slightly better. We'll grab the, um, we'll put the car at the top and then we'll do a div row. We'll put the title maybe above the car and then we'll put the, uh, we'll get rid of, no, we'll keep, we'll keep all that there. We'll just do div col lg6. And inside there, we're going to put the content and then we'll leave room for the right hand side to maybe put some information about the car and stuff like that. So we'll refresh it now. As you can see, we've got Toyota Corolla. We've got the date there. Might be good to remove the actual date from there. See, we're using the blog content section that we created earlier. It might be better if we create a new new section. So we'll just call it section, uh, I don't know, post top, custom post, or you could call it section cars.php if you want to. And um, let's just copy the blog content over into there. And let's just remove some of this stuff. So we could take the posted by because we probably don't want that there and the date as well. Um, or if you wanted the date, you just could probably move it down the page and uh, save that. Now we'll link up section cars. Cool. Okay, so now we have our the title, the picture and the content and the date at the bottom. So now that we have our uh, custom post type single page, we want to have an archive as well, similar to how we had our blog archive, okay? So what we can do is we can create a new file called archive-cars.php and it acts in the same way. It will check if that exists and if it does, it will automatically start working. So if we take away Toyota Corolla from there, you should see that it comes to a blank page but if we type in test here, it should work. Okay, good. So let's grab the, uh, the standard archive.php that we created earlier, paste that into archive-cars, refresh. And as you can see, now we have our Toyota Corolla come up there and we can click to read more. So now that we've mastered custom post types, we might wanna use things called custom fields. Custom fields are pretty much uh, or give you the ability to go into a post and fill out different fields on the page based on what you want. So for example, if with this car, we wanted to display the price, we might want to display the registration date, uh, the color, all that sort of stuff, and maybe a gallery with multiple photos of the car in there. That's where custom fields come into play. So I'll be covering that in the next video and I look forward to seeing you there. Cheers.